Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Proverbs chapter 5 and Hebrews 10. Now, I'm down in Durban. This is the Amgani River. It, it's where it enters the Indian Ocean. It's a Sunday. I've just finished preaching at our Durban site. And I thought, let me stop here because this is the site where a couple of weeks ago there was incredible devastation. Where I'm standing on these banks here, it was meters high in water, buses, tankers were washed down this river left absolute devastation now proverbs chapter 5 speaks about a devastation that will come upon a life if you follow an adulterous woman remember this first few proverbs in the book of proverbs is a father talking to his son warning him of things and he says here verse 3 for the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey her speech is smoother than oil but in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. So it's going to be like, you're going to take it in your tongue. You're going to, you're going to receive her, her words that she speaks to you. But it's going to be like turning in your stomach. It's going to be like a sword dug into your abdomen. Her steps lead straight to the grave. Stay far from her door, he says in verse 8. Instead, rejoice with the wife of your youth. May you be ever intoxicated with her love. Verse 20 says, Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? It'll lead you to ruin. It'll wash your life away. Like this great flood in KZN wash people's lives away. Verse 22 says, For lack of discipline they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Now you, if you are married and have been married for some time, you'll say, well, that's, you know, that's good advice. If you're unmarried, you'll say, well, I'll never do that. No, actually, it's clear from this proverb that adultery starts with a walk in the wrong direction, with a listening to the wrong person, with an embracing of words before your life gets dragged down that pathway. And so he's saying, my son, be careful. Don't even walk down her path because the end of her path is death and destruction. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, it starts by saying this, the law is only a shadow of the good things are coming, not the realities themselves. So in other words, it's a very overcast day today, but there's this palm tree hanging in my way. Imagine if the sun was shining and it cast a shadow on the floor. I would be able to tell it's a palm tree, but it wouldn't be the reality itself. And yes, I looked at it and I, I climbed it and I touched it. No, it's, it's just a shadow. And he says, well, the law is like that. It looks like the real thing, but it's not the real thing. And then he describes the sacrifice of bull and cows and sheep and goats. And he says, look, it looks like the real thing, but it isn't the real thing. He looks at the high priest that was set into the tabernacle. Looks like the real thing, but there was something else that was on its way. And he's basically saying the blood of goats and bulls can't take away sin. He sets aside the shadow. Verse 9 says, he sets aside the first to establish the second. What's he talking about? The first covenant the old covenant to replace it with the new covenant and by that we will uh, we have all been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all and he says look day after day the priest stands there sacrificing it but it can't take away your sin but when this priest this is Jesus has offered for all once and for all a sacrifice for sins then he sat down in his majesty in heaven he says now that that there is the real thing therefore verse 19 brothers and sisters since we hate this great confidence to enter the holy place why because we're not talking about shadows we're talking about a real high priest who stands before god and who's opened the way for us into heaven we can boldly come into his presence because he has said that he has given himself for you and for me by a new and living way opened up for us through his his body which is he says the curtain remember in the old days there was a curtain like there was a there was a a partition between man and god and only the high priest could walk in there talk to god on your behalf walk back again he says no by his body he's opened up a way so that you can come into the presence of god and so he says let's not give up meeting together uh, let's not backslide uh, let's not take for granted what he has done let's uh, not throw away our confidence but come with him with boldness and thanksgiving and thank him for what he's done, giving us access to the Father. That's one.
He pretend it's all about.